All right, so my name is Nicole Purpeline. I'm with Design Theory. And um, I just want to share a quick talk about social media and advertising. So, oh, I will. All of my information is on the last slide. Ah, okay, my Twitter handle is at DT underscore Nicole. No H. Reluctant social media manager, that is me. Is anyone else like reluctant about managing your social media account? Like you wanna just do the work and provide the product and you know, give the service and all that social media stuff is just, right? But not really you know, wanting to invest a lot of money into hiring a social media manager. We don't need to go that far. But I'm sure there's things that we could be doing to increase our reach, our, our, ex our exposure. That's me, social media manager, but reluctant. So where do you start? First thing, what is your goal? And I mean, she talked a little bit before about what is it that you're trying to accomplish on social media? Okay, so really think about what am I trying to do? Am I just trying to get my name, my name out there, build my brand? Or am I actually trying to make sales from people on social media? Am I trying to network? Am I trying to establish myself as a knowledgeable person within my industry? Really understand what your goal is. Am I trying to generate content from users? Am I trying to create a community? Based on what your goal is, Talk about what your audience is, right? So we do a lot of work with photographers that are starting up you know, their own businesses and they're trying to get online. They need a website. They need you know, some type of advertising. And we always talk to them and we say, okay, so you're a wedding photographer. Who are you trying to get? I'm trying to get brides. No, you're not. You're trying to get event planners, right? Because the event planners have the brides. So really think about who your audience is. You know, high level, you might think, I'm a photographer. My audience is the person I'm taking a picture of. No, if you're a photographer, your audience is the person who has a thousand people that you're trying to take a picture of. So really understand who your audience is, understand your goal, and that's going to lead you to the right platform. I mean, the list is monumentous, but we have our big three. You got your Twitter, you have your Facebook, you have your Instagram. You got your Snapchat, you have your Dying Vine, you have Anchor, you have... Hey, just saying, sorry. <laughs> you have, um, you have uh, Blab, you have Periscope, you have all of these different avenues. You just have to really understand where your audience is and is that audience going to get you to your goal. Last step, once you identify those platforms, and I'm a big proponent of don't spread yourself too thin. I hate like when you're talking to someone or they give you their card and it's like five different accounts and at this, at that, at integrate. Okay, so you need to make sure that the platforms that you are choosing play well together. Make sure you're integrating, all right? So that's just where to start. Our next slide, we're gonna start because this is a lightning talk, nice and easy with Facebook. Easiest platform and in my opinion, biggest bang for your buck. Because we are gonna talk about spending money, okay? Not just creating ads, we're gonna talk about actually spending money on these ads. So, you're on Facebook, it integrates well. Facebook owns Instagram, Facebook and Twitter are kind of friends. So, you can really leverage having a Facebook page for your business. Facebook groups are becoming more and more popular. Um, for the sake of creating ads, you need to have a Facebook page, okay? Whether you use your page as much and you know, maybe you lean more on your Facebook group is the decision of all of your own. But in order to do the ads, you need to have a Facebook page. Make sense? All right, so you wanna generate engagement. You wanna join other groups. You wanna like other people's pages. You wanna comment. And this is a rule that goes across platforms, even on Instagram. Instagram, the biggest way for you to generate more leads and more people on Instagram is to search the hashtag that you're trying to promote, you know, in, in a general, not your specific WordCamp Miami 2016 hashtag, but WordPress. Right? You search your hashtag that you're trying to promote, find the top influencers. Don't just like their pages, comment. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Or, you know, thanks for sharing this. Or what do you think about blah, blah, blah? That person is gonna follow you. Their followers are gonna follow you. And now every time I'm looking at WordPress, uh, you know, post on Instagram or on Twitter, I always see your name come up. This person must know something about this thing, so let me go follow them. 
So that's how you kind of generate that engagement, especially if you don't have a base to work from, right? If your your industry, your family and friends don't care about what you do, so like how do I get people who care about what I do to help support me? Hey, I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> So, and then use tools to keep your page active. Oh my goodness. Twitter, um, you have Communit, you have um, all of the Buffer, TweetDeck, Hootsuite. You have all of these different tools that will help automate posts for you, help automate the process of engaging, right? So where maybe I only have to go in two days a week and just kind of like, oh, thank you. No, like really thank you for following. I know that was my bot that said thank you, but now I'm gonna really, it, I'm really gonna say thank you. Um, other tools like uh, Hashtagify Me, which will let you search, and you know I'll put these things up because I don't think I added it in the slide, but it'll let you search hashtags and find the ones that are related. How popular is it? Like I might think that you know save the dolphins in the world, you know hashtag is you know the best hashtag to use. But if I put that in a Hashtagify Me, it's gonna say you know stop Sea World is the best hashtag to use. Does that make sense? So you use tools to really help you be specific. Facebook has easy conversions. All right, if you, has anybody done a Facebook ad? All right, Facebook pages, people have Facebook pages? Okay, easy conversion, and they keep changing it. If you haven't um, taken the time, go to Facebook for business. I think it's called uh, facebook.com slash business. They have a whole course of how to use Facebook to generate conversion for your business. I mean, the courses are, they get very specific and it bleeds over into just common business practices, but also, you know, how to use the, the learn more uh, tab, how to create a really engaging ad, when to use a video ad versus a regular ad, and then what we're gonna talk about for like, literally 30 seconds is retargeting, which is my absolute favorite service that Facebook is providing. And I think that at some point when Facebook realizes the amount of money that they are generating for businesses, it's gonna become a service that's gonna be monetized by them because retargeting is mind blowing. When I saw it, I was like, I can't believe that they do this. Okay. And then it's effective, inexpensive advertising. Cheapest, cheapest ad, unless it's changed on Facebook, I think you can start at $5. Right, five bucks, come on. And again, um, integration with Instagram ads in the late fall last year, Facebook started rolling out Instagram ads small to small pockets of businesses. I think by now almost everybody should have Instagram ads unless you just recently created your Facebook page. They're kind of wanting it to start with you know small business that were more established that they know would use it. Um, so if you haven't, you can always send a message over to support and say, hey, I'm interested in doing an ad on Instagram. Most people think that you go through Instagram to set up your ads, but you actually do it within the Facebook uh, page ad manager. Next slide. <clears throat> All right, quick anatomy of the Facebook ad, and I apologize, this got a little um, squished because of the display. But basically you create an image-based ad with attractive copy. Key note is image-based ad. Facebook has a rule that you can only have 20% of text on your image of your ad and Facebook has a really bad calculator for that 20% yeah. image of am I the only one? Oh my gosh. Five minutes more. So, <laughs> so image based ad. Um, and this is one of our uh, clients that we've, we've done ads for. You wanna make sure you're targeting the appropriate audiences. When you go into the ad manager, it can get very specific. I can say, I only want you know 18 to 35 year olds who live within this zip code, who have searched these pages, who are interested in this, who buy things online, who like to use Google, and who follow B. Wright, one of my favorite musicians, on, on Facebook. Like you can get specific to five people, right? And say, I wanna just flood these five people with you know, ads all day, every day. Again, the bang for your buck. And we all know Facebook knows everything about us, right? Facebook, especially if you have it installed on your desktop, Facebook is not only looking at what you're doing on Facebook, they're looking at what you're doing in all those other tabs, what you're searching, what websites you've been to, 
And what they're doing is they're allowing us small businesses to tap into that information to target our customers. So when you go back to that first page where we were talking about your goal, your audience, your platform, you really have to know your audience. I listened to a podcast that my husband made me listen to where this woman was talking about like imagine the actual person who is your target customer. What would they do? What would they like? What would they want to be interested in? Write that list and feed it into the ad manager and you'll be targeting that exact person. Next one. All right, so this is just a screenshot, Facebook ads. This is a really small campaign that we did, but I just wanted you to see for the price what we were able to do. So we spent $30, we reached seven, 7,500 people, and we had 1,800 uh, video views. And this is for a business that is local to Orlando, Florida, that specializes only in photography workshops for brand new photographers, not established photographers, not people who are making all of their money in photography, so very specified group of people. And we were able to target those people. And I think it tells you, it, uh, Facebook will give you a range. Like as you start putting in your requirements, it'll say, all right, you're gonna get like 500,000 people in this bucket. We had gotten down to 1,800 to 2,300 people in the bucket of people that we were trying to target we got almost 1,800 views wow. for $30. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And we ran it for seven days, if that. Did you do a lot of uh, ad sets or ads with A-B testing in it? We didn't How do a lot of the A-B testing. We did two ads. Ad sets? Here. Two ad sets. Two ad so ad these are... That's it. Just that's these two. These are the two ads that we did right, right here. That was good. Yeah. So we... <laughs> So we did, uh, you know, one ad where it's got like the cute little animation and, you know, the music behind it and the guys talking like, this is why you should come to our workshop event. And then we did the sexy one where it's like, don't you want to take fashion photos? All of that <laughs> we, put in, we put in there and you can see which one performed better. People like the little nice little animation one. Okay. So this is just, you know, kind of give you an idea of what you'll see once you go into Facebook ads and start trying to um, create your ads. All right, this is it. This is it. This is the reason why we did this talk. The pixel. All right, listen. What Facebook will do is after you've created your ad, you created your audience, you know who you want, Facebook will give you a pixel. It will give you a snippet of code to take and put on your website. If you do WordPress development, you put it in the header. That's it. Just copy this code. Now they also give you, um, some additional switches that you can add to the code that can be even more specific. If you have a, you know, a large site and maybe you have a blog post that you know was really talking to the people that you're trying to get to, you can actually um, edit your code to say, especially target these people who looked at this page. But anyway, just the basic code enough, to me, is like $1,000 worth of investment. You take this code, you put it on your website. Now, every time, not every time the person clicks the button from your ad to go look at your website. Every time any person in the world goes to your website, Facebook is tracking that, and then Facebook will come back, and if they're on Facebook, they're gonna see your ad. Now, now, here's the other thing. You can edit, you can edit your, <laughs> right? Okay. All right, listen, here's the other thing though. You can edit your pixel code to say, Oh, not even if this person visits my website, but you know, like what if they go to my competitor's, my competitor's website? What if they go to, like if I'm trying to target people who are at this specific store, they need to come to, you know, live in this area, be this age, have this income, like to shop online and go to this store because I have the store's website. Maybe not just the store. Let's say the store had a specific event or a sale. I want them to go to that event page. Like you can get so specific. Like I want everyone who's been to Word Camp Miami to see my ad. I can do that in my pixel without them touching, without them even knowing who I am on Facebook. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So this is where you go. We're still within the ad manager. If you go into tools and go to pixels, It'll give you the initial pixel code. You copy that pixel code, you put it in your header, and it'll even tell you, your pixel's working. No, we don't see your pixel, you didn't do it right. Question. You're saying you put it on your header on your... You put it... If you did, like, we just did a campaign, 
Yeah. Yeah. Drive them to the event page. Yeah. So you're saying where on the page would you be putting this pencil code? You'll put it on your website in the HTML header for your website. Question. So I'm confused because I use Pixel, but I yeah, don't need to make go. one code. You're saying that the Pixel can be tuned for each uh, different market? Yes. Yes. That. I think I have a, can you see a screenshot on the next page? Okay. So my talk is almost over, guys, but um, you, can, you can create more than one Pixel. And you can also edit it, facebook.com slash business. It will walk you, just look up pixels and it'll walk you through how to create those, those different. But you can edit it and then you can even further target your traffic. It only lasts as long as you're However long you're running, ad. however. You're while you're paying for the ad. While you're paying for the ad, yes. Okay, and I think that's it. Next slide. That's it. Here's my contact information. Email me, tweet. Nobody's coming here. Just keep going. <laughs> Go ahead. You can. I can answer questions. Anyone who's you know not hungry. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. You did. 